Okay, Raspberry Pi. Is it destined to die? That's what I titled this little video, and uh, that's what I'm here to talk about. And uh, I guess the main reason why I'm talking about it here is because I guess that there's a financial backing behind quite a few different companies. Uh, they're looking to make profit, and they said, hey, that Raspberry Pi idea behind using these mobile low-power chips uh, to make actual full-size computers, that's actually a decent idea. There's going to be, a, you know, lots of money to be made in this low-end market or to people who are trying, like myself, to do low-power computing uh, to, like, fit into, like, uh, you know, like, solar systems and stuff like that. Um... And, uh, I guess, uh, the main competitors right now, uh, on the high end, there's Cotton Candy, of course. Uh, it's a dual processor system, uh, and, uh, that's, like, on the, uh, like, high end, where it's gonna be, like, really high performance. Um, and then in the in-between, there's the MK802 and the Z802, which I've done vlogs for before. Uh, which, in the description down there, I'll put links to all this stuff. Uh, in case you're watching this video by itself for the first time. Oh yeah, I, many of you may notice I got a haircut. Hmm. But, uh, the biggest competitor right now is somebody who's looking at the low end. Um, and, uh, really packing a lot of punch into the system that they're doing. And that's APC, and you might see me look over a little bit here, and that's because I got the specs here. They basically have the exact same system uh, that the uh, Raspberry Pi has. It's in a little bit larger of a format. It takes, um, it fits inside of a um, mini ITX uh, case. Uh, it's a new form factor that they've uh called Neo ATX, which is half the size of a Mini ITX, which I, I think is half the size of Mini. I do know the form factor, their new form factor is called Neo ATX. I've seen it inside of the case, and it's like, freaking little as hell. It's ridiculous. But they packed a lot into this little system. Like, uh, let's see here right now. They have the, uh, an 800 megahertz a uh, processor inside the thing. Uh, they have uh, 512 megabytes of DDR3. Uh, it uh, does uh, 2D and 3D resolutions up to 720p. I know that the uh, um, the Raspberry Pi sets up 1080, but still, you know, this is pretty impressive because it has HDMI. As VGA, VGA is like a big thing. They're like uh, the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi does not have VGA, so a lot of people have been like, "Oh crap! Now I got to get a VGA display for this damn thing." Uh, it has uh, four USB 2 ports. It has audio in and out, just like all the rest. And it has a micro SD port. It has uh, a 10 100, uh, and so it's it's very small. It's a uh, 170 millimeters by 85 millimeters. This is little. This is minuscule. And they have said that uh, running full force, that their system uh, takes up 13 watts of power. That's pretty little. That's that's hardly any juice at all. And at idle, it uh, only sucks up four watts. That's that's a pretty impressive little product there, you know. Um, of course, you do have to have like a, uh, you know, a case for it and a power supply and everything. But that's pretty impressive at a uh, price point of $49. I don't know how much uh, the shipping is going to be. But I do know that um, the Raspberry Pi itself is uh, around that price point with the shipping. At, you know, right around 50 bucks. You know, that's one been one of my main arguments about the the fact that, uh, like, the MK802 and the Z802 are uh, very impressive uh, little computers. Um, 
So if you're looking for a uh, media center type PC or just a, um, uh, a, a very low power PC, something to just hook up to your computer, the APC system could be really uh, situated towards you. Um, and the MK802 and Z802 definitely are like, uh, like really like good on that. Oh, and I, I did mention that the APC has 2 gigabytes of memory and already comes preloaded with the Android uh, operating system. It's a customized uh, Android 2.3 operating system. Um, I've seen it running and I've seen it doing what it's supposed to do and I gotta tell you, it looks good. Uh, and the MK and the Z802, they're both, like, looking really, really good. I, I don't know about the Raspberry Pi. I mean, uh, it might be good for hobbyists and such. You know, people are trying to do robotics and everything because it has lots of uh, GPIO ports and stuff. But, uh, I don't know. For the mainstream, uh, the APC system... The MK and the Z802, they look to be really kick-ass. And uh, uh, somehow I really think that that uh, cotton candy system, I think it's going to drop in price because they're going to see that there's all these competitors out there with these systems like all of these ones that I just said. And I think that they're going to drop their price. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that I've heard anything, but I'm saying that, uh, you know, I can see it happening so that they can compete uh, with those systems. So, that's something big. But then, another thing that I wanted to mention is that if you're not exactly looking for a media center PC, if you're just looking to do a little bit of web browsing, uh, a little bit of, like, YouTubing and, um, you know, and not in high def, and... Uh, <clears throat> you're just looking, or you're looking to do like a file server, or just a really low power computer, there's another option out there that you can do, and that's Thin Clients. Uh, and one individual uh, Thin Client that I looked into lately, let me try to here, get my mouse here, and click over to the other tab that I had. The other one that I've been looking at, no, oh, shoot. Uh, my mouse does not seem to be working, but the uh, the one that I've been looking at lately. Let me try to use this. Crap! Give me a second. Everybody, yep. There we go. Uh, the other one that I've been looking at lately. I'm shoot. I'll have to. Uh, stupid computer that I got here. Okay, the one that I've been looking at lately, which I think um, offers a lot of expandability, um, and it's not the only one out there, it's just one of them, and that's Thin Clients. Thin Clients, uh, people have kind of ignored them for a long time. Thin Clients have this amazing ability to do tons of the things that everybody wants in the small package, and it's really... Uh, the thing that uh, all of these uh, computer systems have uh, gone after. Um, you know, like the, the Cotton Candy, the Raspberry Pi, the MK802, the Z802. All of these systems, they've really been shooting for what thin clients have been doing for a long time. And uh, one individual one that I've been thinking about purchasing myself is the uh, V... The, it's, it's made by Weiss, which is spelled W-Y-S-E, and it's the V90LE, and um, it's a very capable little system. It's a, it's amazing, and, and uh, um, you know, that's, that's just one of the very, very capable systems uh, that are thin clients. Thin clients are these really small, little teeny computers that take up almost no power. Uh, they're exactly like these small computers except for they were just like marketed differently and they've been made before these systems and a lot of them are come with uh, uh, computer chips that are actually x86 chips so there's tons of operating systems out there for those that you don't that don't know if you're running a windows pc you have an x86 cpu uh and these um 
new small computers that, uh, that you know that everybody's interested in, in, like the Raspberry Pi, Cotton Candy, MK, and Z802. They're all mobile chips, and there's limited, limited, very limited uh, support for these chips. But uh, for these x86 chips, I mean, these things have been around since the 80s. There is tons of support out there. And like uh, the the V90L itself, and this is, um, like I'm saying, it's just one individual computer. But lots of these, it has the, it has a VIA, VIA, which is now owned by AMD, I believe. Um, it has like an 800 megahertz CPU, which is not all that powerful, but it has like a 10100 Ethernet, it has a few USB ports, what, it has a serial port, a parallel port, a couple of PS2 ports, um, uh, right here, uh, yeah, running, it has, it takes up about 14 to 18 watts of power, um, and on some of the models, uh, and including not just th that one that I'm talking about, but lots of them have PCMCIA support. So you can, like, plug in, you know, like a, a cool card, like, uh, well, I don't have a PCMCIA card sitting around, but uh, some of you may know, but some of you might not know, that PCMCIA is a very standard, very, very standard. I mean, since, like, the early 90s. PCMCIA has been like the format for putting like an expansion card inside of a computer. So there's just like tons of accessories that you can plug into that. Plus, uh, like that one that I, the V90L, uh, it has USB 2.0 ports. So of course, there's all the USB type things that you can plug into it. Um, but th it's not only that one. There's tons of thin clients out there. Look up thin clients and look into them. If you're not looking for like this really hardcore system, if you're just looking for something uh, as a hobbyist, or you're looking for something to do file sharing, uh, to uh, you know disseminate uh, uh, traffic on your own personal network, uh, you're looking to make a very small web server or something. Uh, thin clients really can fit the bill, and a lot of them actually come preloaded with uh, things like uh, Windows XP Embedded, or, of course, there's, you know, because it's uh, x86 CPU, there are just tons of Linux flavors that you can put on a system like this. Or you can put a full-fledged, like, Windows XP, or even on some of the more advanced systems. I wouldn't put it, like, on a V90LE system like I'm looking at, I wouldn't put uh, Windows 7 on it, but you could. It wouldn't run very well, but you could do it. Uh, but uh, these systems, they off the ground, you know, right as soon as you get it out the door, as soon as you get it in the mail, you can put a really cool operating system on there. And you don't have some of the troubles, like uh, in one of my previous videos, I had said that uh, the uh, 3D chip um, on like the uh, Cotton Candy, the Raspberry Pi, the MK, and the Z802, that they all have the problem that they only support OpenGL ES. Um, you don't run into those kind of problems with uh, a system like a thin client. So, for a lot of you guys, you might go, you know, like, hey, I'm not looking for something like, like really hard, high-powered, crazy. A thin client might be actually, like, and you can buy them used. There's a lot of used clients, and I mean, they go for as cheap as like 20 or 30 bucks. So, and I'm, I'm talking with shipping, you know. You can really get a high-powered system that can do everything that you want with a thin client. So if you're not trying to do something really crazy and something really advanced, if you're not looking to make, you know, like... 1080p content and you're not trying to like run like Quake 3 or something a thin client might actually be what you're looking for because it takes as just that, that it takes that small amount of power that you might be looking for it has a very small footprint takes very little power it can do all those things and it has tons 